Hi everyone, Logan here again with another video. This time I'm going to be talking about a new piece of equipment I've received and um, that will also mean a lot of clouds coming. But uh, this is it here and I'll leave it to this guy to um, say what it's called. There you go! Thank you! Welcome to the Esatto, the next generation of all-in-one focusers. So yeah, as you can see it's from, I think they say Prima Luce Lab, I'm not exactly 100% sure. Um, and we'll just show you the actual device. I've spared you the unboxing of the boxing. Um, a bo unboxing of the box. So here it is here. I'm still in its um, plastic wrapping. And it is the two inch version of their robotic focuser. And this is to go on the back of the 10 inch me. Now at the moment I've got a Crayford focuser, which is not exactly the most accurate thing in the world. Um, it does require me to sort of tighten a little tension screw at the bottom for it to be able to move in and out. And that does shift after a while. And um, I, I do tend to find that after imaging for a few, well, probably a few weeks, but um, the, I think we changed the temperature also, the tension on that screw changes and the whole thing gets a bit loose and then sometimes I'd sort of, the scope would be pointing up and the whole imaging train will just slide backwards and you've got to get back in there and redo it again. And I wanted something that was a little more accurate. Um, the other thing is this is all going to be screwed, everything will be screwed together in the imaging train. Uh, with my current um, Crayford Focuser, it requires me to sort of slot it inside and use a couple of those um, tension um, screws to hold it in place. And because there's only on my current one two, one at the top and one on the side, it tends to mean that the whole imaging train when I tighten it up just gets sort of pushed off to one side a little bit. So that's obviously going to affect the um, the way the image looks, the stars, etc. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes. And um, we'll get the wrapping off and uh, get on the back of the 10 inch mead. Okay, so I'll try and um, not get in the way as much as possible for this. So first thing I need to do is remove this out of the imaging train. Just pop this out and get a that's all clean, a little cap of some description on the end there to stop the dust from getting in. And then it'll be a matter of removing this, which actually comes off pretty easily, like so. Remove this connection at the back. And there's the two inch connection for This to just screw on the back like so. And then the Asato just pops on here. Just get that nice and lined up and straight as best I can. No, that all seems right. Okay, I'll just pop that back on again. Ah, there we go. That's more like it. Okay, it seems nice and nice and secure, which is good. So the next thing is to connect this onto the back. And then we're going to take the Optic and just carefully take this out and screw this onto here. Okay, that's all on. Now I just have to do some measuring to make sure that I've got the um, right distance. So all of these can come off. I don't need those because this is really just going to attach straight onto the back of the Optec. I'm just going to do some measuring to make sure that I've got the right back focus. So we'll just be back in a moment. Okay, so we're just going to skip to the end here because there was a fair bit of um, 
fiddling around with bits and pieces and connections to try and get the right back focus because this requires, the Optech requires a back focus of 105 millimeters. I think I'm at about 105.5, um, but that's, hopefully that will be enough. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about this uh, off-axis um, guider because I just don't seem to be able to get the focus right for this and I'm not really sure what's going on. But we'll give it a go with this new whole setup and maybe things will work better. But, um, so we've got the uh, Asato here, the Optech um, focal reducer or telecompressor they call it. Uh, and then there's just a tube here that's about 50 millimeters in length to try and use up some of the 105 um, millimeters of back focus, a couple of connections to try and use up a bit more space and then the off-axis guider, the uh, filter wheel and the ASI 1600mm Pro. And um, if I can get all this working with this um, off-axis guider, then I can get this fella off the top here. So next is to load in the software onto the laptop, which will now be controlling this because I won't be able to use the ASI here. So we'll go and have a look at doing that. Okay, so I've got the uh, web page up of Prima Loose Lab here, and first I go to user manuals up here, and just run down to the Asato Robotic Focus. I click on that, and you'll get a manual uh, like this, sort of a page book type look. Now it seems a little small um, initially, and I had it on a laptop when I was trying to do it, and it was quite hard to read. But if you just sort of click down here, it'll get more full full screen and be much easier to to follow. I actually got a PDF version here which um, I thought we can go through and have a look at. So this is what it um, what it looks like. This is the uh, the draw tube. It has 15 millimeters of travel. I saw some concerns expressed on some forums as to whether that would be enough. Certainly it's plenty for me to use with my 10 inch mead so that hasn't been an issue. Uh, underneath the bottom are the uh, connections, so the USB-C port is down here, there is a connection here which works with, in conjunction with um, Primalus Labs uh, rotator, so that's how you can connect those together to work uh, together, and then there's a 12 volt power goes in here, temperature probe plugs in here, now unfortunately a uh, temperature probe doesn't come with the actual focuser, which is a little disappointing because I did have the probe included with my Pegasus Astro Focus Cube and also with the ZWO focuser, so I kind of thought that they could have included that, but no, you have to purchase it separately. Uh, the Wi-Fi antenna is down here, reset button if you need to reset it, and um, status lights to tell you that it's got power, Wi-Fi, etc. Now, if you want to load up the software, obviously you want to load in some software or some ASCOM drivers. And if you look down in the manual, it says to uh, follow this link. Now, if you notice the, um, the, the sort of uh, folder structure here, or directory structure, um, it's a little different to actually the way it is now. So the problem is when you click on this and you say follow the link, um, you'll get an error come up. So what you need to do is actually just go to um, the, the Premier Lisa Lab website and click on Downloads and you can see that the, the um, directory structure is slightly different and I guess that's why it, the, the link in the manual doesn't work anymore. But just run down to here and you see Download Software Package 3.0. It's got uh, the user manual, the uh, driver, ASCOM driver, etc. And you just click on that and it um, downloads uh, over here as a zip file. Unzip it and install it and it'll install everything that you need. Now I'm just going to go to the, um, just disconnect that, if this is where the, this is the Primalus Lab software that can run the, the, the focuser. Uh, and what you need to do is there are instructions to, sh to tell you how to find out what COM port um, it is connected to. Mine is connected to COM port 3. So you just select that and you hit connect and it will connect to the focuser because um, it's hooked up at the moment and, and running. Um, and it shows here the internal temperature is 29.6, it's summer here and it's a bit hot where it's sitting. Uh, the external temperature, no reading because I don't have the probe and this is the voltage. And then you can, you know, um, do changes manually here if you want to, but 
the main reason for having this is to, I think, initially set up the software and then you would have the, the focus of being controlled by your favorite imaging software. And in my case, it's Nina, but otherwise it could be SG Pro or whatever. Now, I think the best thing to do when you're setting up, particularly with an SCT, where you've actually got your sort of focus knob for the um, SCT still present, um, is to make your make this draw tube travel out to about the mid position. Now, as you can see, it's only this far along here, and it's at 54,000 steps. This is something you have to get your head around too, as the step size is hugely different to other focuses that you may have been using. So, for example, my Pegasus Astro Focus Cube, I've been using step size of around about 30 uh, when I'm using it with a Skywatch or a Spree 120 and when I'm using them, used it with the Mead 10 inch it was more like 150 to 200 steps when doing autofocus. This situation, I mean you can see I'm along here, this is 54,000 so I'm actually working in steps at the moment of around about 10 or 12,000. So that's something to get your head around and to realise that you've actually got to use um, thousands of step sizes in order to get a nice V or U curve. So I would suggest moving the focuser out to this middle position, then uh, use the um, focus knob on your SCT to get approximate focus on stars, then lock the mirror and then you can start um, making fine adjustments to the actual focuser to get nice pinpoint stars. And that way you'll have plenty of travel um, either side when you're doing your um, autofocus. Uh, why I've ended up down here, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway. So the only thing is that you can't be running this software and have it connected to, say, Nina at the same time. Because uh, if you try and connect to this, it'll do, with this running and connected to COM3, it'll say it you know, can't connect. So the thing to do would be to disconnect it and then just um, shut that software down. When it comes to um, hooking it up with Nina, um, again you click on the cogs here and you want to select the COM port, same COM port that I was using in the Primalusa Lab software which is COM3. And then when you click this download, um, or the, sorry this drop down um, to look for the type of focuser, so you can see I've actually used the ZWO focuser here um, previously. Um, you can you, you'll see you should see the Asato ASCOM driver version 1.3 appear or whatever version is current at the time. Why I have a secondary one there, I don't know. Maybe I downloaded it twice. I'm not sure, but just click on that and then connect. And it says connected successfully. And again, it's telling me my position is 54,054. Um, my temperature is minus 127 degrees. It's not because I'm imaging on the dark side of the moon. Uh, although that would have really nice dark skies. Uh, it's just that's a default reading you get if uh, you don't have the temperature probe um, included. And uh, so you can make some adjustments here, some coarse and fine adjustments. But then the next thing you want to go into options into your autofocus page. And this is where you're going to um, set up your step size. Now I've got a backlash in and out of zero because my understanding is this doesn't have a backlash so I don't have to worry about that but you know, uh, you know I'm still still getting the hang of this this focuser. I have um, you know mucked around with different step sizes I think I started off at about 5,000 I've done 8,000 I'm currently trialing 12,000. Uh, the most recent um, imaging session I had, I was getting a reasonable V curve, but I think uh, I could do a little bit better. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit, a little bit further. But um, I'll show you the image that I did at the end with this um, uh, to show you that it was, you know, it was pretty successful first run with the with the focuser and all the connections. Um, that I showed earlier on a a along with the um, Optic Telecompressor which I, I haven't used before. Okay so I've got the 10 inch mead set up um, for tonight and uh, it's supposed to be clear to at least 2 o'clock in the morning I hope, fingers crossed. Uh, tonight will be very much a test run to see if I've got the um, Hisato 2 inch robotic focuser working and also I want to do the off axis guiding with the ASI 290 um, Mini uh, and the uh, imaging camera, the ASI 1600 MM Pro. I don't know if I've got the distances right here so I can get this in focus with this but we'll see how we get on. Haven't chosen a target tonight but um, I think I'll go and check out Telescopius and see what's looking good. 
So just a quick update, um, it's about quarter past two in the morning, the moon is just starting to rise. Um, anyway, this has been behaving really well, um, I had a few teething issues at the beginning and there's still a few more things to, to work out but um, I've been able to guide from the OAG so that's good and um, the uh, Asato Robotic Focuser has been performing really well. Um, it's not a bad V-curve, I think I've still got to work out a few kinks on how exactly to adjust the steps. I mean, I'm working on a step size of 7,000 steps at the moment, so it's quite a fine focuser. Um, but uh, I'm just going to run through as many of the filters as I can until uh, sunrise. Probably going to have to stop imaging about 4.30 if the clouds stay away, um, which won't be too bad so far. So good, um, yeah, tonight's going well. Thank you.